Hello YouTube, uh, this is Snack from Crow's Nest, and um, I'm probably going to have to just not edit this video, I want to get it out as fast as I can. Um, Deck Devastators 3 was this previous weekend, and it really shook up the meta of Edison format. Uh, there are some things that surprised, definitely surprised me, and I think surprised a lot of other people as well. Um, you can see we have all the deck lists, the top 12. Um, this is on Format Library. You can also go to edisonformat.com and find them. Trap Dragons was a big, um, a big surprise, I think. Um, what else? There's a Machina decks, two Machina decks. Um, where are they? There's this one, which two Machina decks both got, um, top eight. And that, like, that's a deck that just came out of nowhere. But, um... Anyways, I'm going to start going into stats. I know that's what a lot of people are interested in, and I can finally give it to them. So this is the deck representation. Um, so we had 21 Blackwing decks, 17 Zombie decks, 15 Frog decks, 14 Hero decks, 12 Lightsworn decks, 8 Dragon decks, 8 Machina decks, 7 Value Turbo, 6 Fairy, 4 Glads, 4 Stun, 4 Synchro Cat, 3 Monster Mash, 3 Quick Draw, 2 Alien, 2 Saber, 1 Assault Mode, 1 Dark Synchro, Final Countdown, Karaz, Monarch, Ritual, and 6 Samurai. So that's every deck that we had. Um, I think a lot of people expected Black Wings, Zombies, Frogs, Heroes, Light Sworn. A lot of these are expected. I think Dragons and Machina both showing up as much as they did is a big surprise and Vayu only having seven entrants also where is it quick draw only having three I think these are all uh surprises um so not only did they show up but they performed really well um especially Machina so if you look at all the conversion rates of the top 12 um I did top 12 because it's like that made the most sense for a conversion rate to me. But um, there are only eight people that entered with Machina decks, and 37% of them made top 12. There were three of them in there. Um, six people entered with Fairy, 16% of them topped, that being the one Carpath, <laughs> and so on and so on. So you can see 16 here for Fairy, 37 for Machina, and Zombies and Frogs didn't convert, but that's just because they have so many. Like, they didn't convert as much because they just have so many people playing those decks and only one of each made it into top 12. Uh, I think there were three Blackwing decks in top 12. Um, anyways, this is huge, and I think it's a response to Blackwings. And I'll get into that a little bit. Actually, I guess I can get into that, like, right now, actually. Um, well, first I'll go over this. It, this is just the raw win percentage of a lot of the decks. Assuming a deck had at least like five uh, people that entered with it that qualified it for this list. I think Lightsworn being this low, they performed really poorly this tournament. Um, Heroes also did really poorly, but I think there's a different reason for that than just like the deck being weaker. Um, Fairy really overperformed, but there's only six people that had it, and I think Carpath is carrying to some extent with that statistic. Machina, just like I said, did really, really well in this tournament. Um, I'm not sure if people weren't prepared for it um, or whatever, but uh, there was a large amount of Blackwing decks, as we saw, and I think Fortress is really good against Blackwings um, just because it's you can summon it without committing any cards to the board which means that they can't aggress you before you get, go to the battle phase. And then you can run it over, and if they collude you, you get to pop something on their side of the field. So Fortress is, like, a really good card. I think for the same reason that Ab Zero is good against... Uh, Ab Zero specifically is good against Black Wings. Um, so I did this, but the big undertaking that I wanted to get done was a matchup table. Um, the sample size is really small for this, so I think, yeah, I think, um, I'm going to keep updating this as more tournaments happen. 
um, and I hid a lot of the decks that like barely exist. But as you can see, like Light Sworn was getting lit up this weekend. Like a bunch of these decks, like they were, they got, they lost three three games to Blackwing or three games to Glass didn't win a single one. Um, they actually did pretty well against Black Wings, but lost four games to Fairies. This is the success rate that the deck had against them, right? Frogs won two games, didn't lose a single game. Heroes won three games, didn't lost one. Uh, Vayu won three games, lost zero. So like all the Light Sworn decks were just getting kind of ran over. Um, Black Wings are actually seems like they had a tough weekend. It's partially just because they had so many people enter. Some of them are gonna not have success, but you see like sixty seven percent all over the board over here. So people were really coming for black wings and I think uh they had success with that. Zombies actually I think did really well. Um they weren't allowing much success against them, but uh as you can see dragons and frogs were like really bad matchups for them. And uh I don't think they were expecting dragons, but frogs is something that I know that they can struggle with and they still don't seem to have found an answer um what else is there machina obviously like this is insane if you look there's not like a single this is just one game against glads that they lost but other than that it's like there's not a single matchup that was unfavorable for them they stopped black wings where black wings only won 33 percent of the games against them like I said, this is a really small sample size, so like, don't go crazy over it, but, and I'm going to keep updating it, um, so that we can get a good idea of like what, like a good statistical analysis of like, this is what an actually good matchup looks like. Um, obviously it's flawed to some extent because these don't represent the matchup, how it actually plays out at the highest level. In order to get a larger sample size, you kind of need to include everybody in a tournament so not just the top tables um so there's lots of limitations with this but i still thought it was a worthwhile effort um frogs once again they did really well this weekend um they had trouble with dragons which is interesting i wouldn't expect that uh, i would expect them to have trouble with glads they played two games against glads and lost them both um fairies did really well as you can see like once again Similar to Machina, they had like no bad matchups. Um, dragons did really well. Um, they didn't do well against fairies, which is interesting because you would think that they would. <laughs> uh, that's basically the only thing that fairies and heroes are the two decks that gave dragons trouble. Um, so yeah, we can get into the more specific decks now. Um, within Black Wings. 11 were playing pure, 10 had Greffer. They had about the same success rate. Um, that's all there is to say about that. <laughs> For dragons, you had three dark dragons like Norlaris or like something else. Um, three dragon turbo, two trap dragons. Obviously, the trap dragons is being carried by the one person, one out of the two people. That, so like, small sample size. Like, don't worry about these success rates. They don't mean much. Um, we actually had more than just Carpath playing Chaos Fairies. Um, about half the people that played Fairies played Pure, and the other half played, like, Dark Package with Sork. Um, frogs. It was mostly Hero Frogs. Um, three Junk Frogs. Two, like, Old School Frog Monarch. One Frog Combo, like, Frog Slicer, Dimitri Style. And one Frog Fairy, Raw Knock, of course. Glad's actually had like a good win rate overall, which is surprising. Um, Jizap got really close, I guess, since there are only four players that played Glad's, and Jizap got really close to the topping. Makes sense that their overall win rate was kind of bolstered by that. Uh, I just called it Bare Bones Glad's because these two decks, and they were the two decks that did the best, it was Jizap and Yumero. Um, both of them were like, they weren't even playing Tiger, they weren't playing Cat, they weren't playing Prisma. It was literally just Gladiator Beasts and Back Row. <laughs> so I call them Bare Bones Glads, and then there's Cat and Prisma Cat. Now this is something I definitely wanted to touch on. Um, 
the hero decks. There were four people playing like Gemini Diva Hero and their success rate was terrible. Like 15% of games is all that they are winning. Whereas if they committed to one of the two different strategies, Diva or Gemini, they had like a much better, they were doing a lot better in that tournament. Um, so might be something to think about. They were getting, they're kind of feeding <laughs> to a lot of the other decks this weekend. The Gemini Diva was at least. Um, and then there's one evil hero. That's cool. Light Sworn. You had the Christia Sworn and the Pure Build. The Christia Sworn did it a little bit better. There's one Flame Vell. Machina decks. Almost all of them. I just called it Chaos, but it's like Reiko Caius, Hamster, DD Worry Lady, stuff like that. Just kind of good stuff Machina. That was most of the decks, and they did really well. There's one Ancient Gear player, and they made it in the top 12, but they were like also running Raikos. Uh, quick draw. There was like almost nobody that entered with quick draw. Cat, not much. To, the cat actually did really well, but I think it's mainly attributable to skilled pilots. Once again, like only four people played cat, and they just knew how to play the deck, and so they kind of uh, feasted on people who are less experienced. I don't think that necessarily means that the cat is like one of the best decks in the format. I think it's fine, but. Vayu Turbo, I called it standard. That's just basically like, it looks a lot like James's build. The Psychic deck is the one that, uh, Psychic Vayu is the one that topped, got top 12. Um, one of them was like heavy light sworn package. And then I called Elf, I called one Elfin Vayu because it was like really aggressive running the triple graffer and Elfin. Zombie, a lot of them were on Diva without heroes. And then the other half were more on the Silchus build with the hero package and Mali and all that. Three of them were running the uh, Krebons. Some of them might have been on uh, Powerwell. I don't remember. There's one Flame Vile Zombie. Um, okay, so I think that's like almost everything. <laughs> Pretty extensive. I've been working on this for a while. This part especially I think is uh, could prove useful. It's still like in the early stages. So like these matchups aren't like solidified or anything. And just one tournament isn't even close to enough to get too much out of this, but it's more of like a descriptive thing. Like this is what happened last weekend rather than this is how the matchup is and will always be. Um, but yeah, Machina really burst onto the scene. I think they probably surprised a lot of people and I would expect them to have less success in the future just because people are going to be prepared for them. Um, same with dragons. I think we hadn't seen trap dragons do well in a long time, but they show that they can, the deck is still strong, um, especially with the new DD War Lady innovation. I think that solves a lot of the problems that the deck had. Um, and it's good in the meta. I think dragons just ha naturally have a good Blackwing matchup. Uh, so yeah, um, hope this was helpful. I know a lot of people were waiting on these st statistics and I guess I will catch you all later. Uh, adios.